Hi there, I'm Sullivan and welcome to my another episode of my series Crazy Glitches and Tricks. Today I decided to show you something interesting. Uh, there are radios in Crazies and Crazies Warhead that you can listen to. They can be treated as curiosities or as easter eggs. On the radio they usually talk about events that happen under the supervision of the public, so it can be a nice curiosity. I collected as many radios here as I found and I will give you their location. If you find a radio on mission that isn't on the film, let me know. The map shows the location of one radio in Crisis in Mission 3 Relic. I hope the film is very good. Please watch. Let me know with commentary. See you soon. civilians from their homes on the island been seen. Why? Kim Jong-chul, dynastic ruler of North Korea, claims it is a humanitarian mission. Tremors have been felt as far away as Hawaii. North Korea claims a volcanic eruption threatens the island's population. U.S. scientists say there has been no volcanic activity on the island in recorded history. Secretary of State Douglas Bornheim says the North Korean actions are nothing short of an invasion. So what is the real story? Dr. Joseph Harford, chair of the Commission on Far East Relations, is with us tonight. First, Joe, what exactly is Kim Jong-chul planning? Well, Alex, there's no doubt this has been building up for some time. Kim Jong-chul has been looking to extend North Korean influence in the Pacific, and they have focused on a group of de facto independent nations, which they perceive as susceptible to North Korean influence. As you will remember, these islands were in the news four years ago, when the North Koreans supported the Marxist RFIP's independence movement. Tensions skyrocketed when the post-revolutionary government, backed by Kim Jong-chul, set about nationalizing billions of dollars of American corporate assets. And what kind of threat do the North Koreans pose? North Korea is no longer the poor man of Asia, Alex. 2008 represented a sea change in North Korean aspirations. On succeeding his father, Kim Jong-chul immediately initiated Xiaoping-style economic reforms, turning North Korean metropolises into virtually independent ultra-free market city-states. Pyongyang now has the second-highest techno-dollar turnover on the planet. This has allowed the North Korean regime to buy in the latest Chinese military technology. And let's not forget, North Korean words are backed by nuclear weapons. surrounding the Linshan Islands continues to escalate amid threats from the U.S. to take action against North Korea following the forced evacuation of Linshan civilian population. Despite recent seismic disturbances in the area, foreign observers conclude that the evacuation is unjustified, raising concerns that the North Koreans are using the situation to forward their own political goals in the region. U.S. officials have urged crisis talks with Pyongyang over their apparent refusal to release five U.S. nationals whom they believe are being held against their will. A North Korean spokesman refuted the claim, stating that Dr. David Rosenthal and his research team are working together with the North Korean government to monitor seismic activity in the area. First, the headlines in detail. BBS World News. I'm Andrew Jones. The U.S. Congress has passed a joint resolution to authorize the use of United States armed forces against the People's Republic of Korea. Protests greeted the announcement in London, Beijing, New York, Berlin, and many other cities around the world. Protest organizers claimed a million-man march. The White House has so far refused to comment. American forces continue to gather just outside the Lingshan Islands exclusion zone. 
The National Security Council announced yesterday that 35,000 military personnel will flow into the area over the coming days. In related news, banana crisis. As a leading world supplier of bananas, recent events on the Lingshan Islands has threatened a banana drought. Prices of global banana stocks already riding high following the evacuation of the island rose dramatically on news of the planned U.S. action. World banana importers expressed concern over the potential destruction of existing banana stocks. Many thousands of tons of bananas lie awaiting export in Lingshan's main harbor, but the U.S. Navy is enforcing a strict blockade. in Asia, news with Robin Ashcroft. United States Secretary of Defense, James Blackburn, has called upon the People's Republic of Korea to hand over control of the Lingshan Islands to U.S. forces. Referring to a substantial gains and the capture of key targets, Blackburn urged the PRK government to end the crisis by accepting a U.S. proposal for withdrawal. Alex Stephanopoulos reports from Heilong, capital of the Lingshan Islands. A storm broke across the tranquil waters of Heilong's Golden Beachfront this morning. The inhabitants awoke to the sound of flak cannons and bunker busters exploding in Hongzhou Harbor as Operation Eternal Liberty struck its first blow. Heilong is now a ghost town. Its streets, once filled with fishermen, tourists and hawkers, are now empty, save for a few pockets of local resistance from the pro-PRK Revolutionary Front Party militants. The Korean People's Army moved out at first light in advance of an expected invasion of the capital by U.S. forces once Hangzhou Harbor was secured. One expert on KPA strategy I spoke to earlier predicted the most likely game plan was to merge these forces with General Keong's main battle group in the Central Mountain. At the mining complex, Keong holds several key cards. Here, he is suspected to be holding American hostages. It is also the longest established KPA base on the island, and as such, is the most well-prepared to fend off the inevitable U.S. assault. Chinese Premier Ling Liu has called for an immediate halt to hostilities and for dialogue between the governments in Washington and Pyongyang. Protests against American actions in Beijing, Shanghai, and Chengdu continue to put pressure on Premier Liu to take action against American interests. Lee Martins reports from the U.N. The diplomatic fallout of the developing crisis in the Pacific has resulted in fiery exchanges across the floor of the General Assembly today. Angered by what the Chinese delegation described as unprecedented arrogance from their American counterparts, an emergency special session was convened with the question of the Lingshan Islands as the substantive item on the agenda. This is the first time in over two decades an emergency session has taken place. The resolution calling for immediate cessation of hostilities by U.S. and KPA forces is currently being debated on the floor and will be voted on later, although any decision taken will be non-binding. WBA News. Constitution earlier today, Admiral Morrison reported stunning successes against KPA forces on the Lingshan Islands. A spokesman for the government in Pyongyang accepted that there had been some early losses, but reiterated their position that U.S. military action is illegal under international law. The spokesman also accused the U.S. government of putting civilian lives at risk with its antagonistic and aggressive behavior. Admiral Morrison, when questioned about the Pyongyang government's response, retorted that U.S. forces will soon be returning the islands to their rightful owners.
first, the headlines in detail. BBS World News. I'm Andrew Jones. The White House announced earlier today that at approximately 8 p.m. GMT, 4 a.m. local time, U.S. forces launched their first strike on KPA positions in the Lingshan Islands. Early reports suggest that the primary target was Hongzhou Harbor on the main island's south shore. Moving quickly to support their beleaguered ally, China Premier Wen Youbang spoke out against American aggression in the Pacific. The White House spokesman defended the military action, saying that the U.S. could no longer stand by and allow the People's Republic of Korea to continue their program of ethnic cleansing. This is the end of today's episode, hope you enjoyed, leave a POW comment or subscription as it motivates to more work, until next time, see you soon.